Hello there, welcome to part 2 of the Chopin Prelude in E minor. We will dive straight into this. Of course I recommend watching part 1 because I'm going to refer to part 1 on the assumption that you have mastered it. If not, please master it. Uh, excuse this uh, cat scratch from uh, too much playing. Uh, I mean playing with the cat, not playing on the piano. So, uh, it begins in the same way. The first two chords are the same and the melody is also the same. So, uh, just for those who might be watching this without watching part one, uh, naughty people, uh, I label the chords, uh, I labelled the chords in video one as uh, how I saw them visually rather than what they are technically in the piece of music, just for visualisation purposes. So don't uh, comment that I'm naming my chords incorrectly for the piece. So, uh, straight into it, same shape, E minor, first inversion, same melody. Having finished, having gone with my little uh, C sharp, which I shouldn't do, but I do. And part two begins here, eight. And then we go into the same shape, which I labelled as D with an added nine for four. And then instead of it going to the f with the flat nine, it's going to go to an F7 shape without the fifth. So, it, so it's going to do that for four, and then it's going to only go to a minor. You could call that a minor seven in the key of F for two, and then it goes to a minor six for two because that's the sixth of the key of F. I'm just using the root as the name of the chord, not not because it's correct in the piece. And then that's going to go to the E7, which is correct in the piece, uh, but without the fifth. And uh, that's going to be played for four. And then that's going to go to a minor for two. And then the D is going to go to a C sharp for two. You're going to play it for two. So let's just see what happens there. You just try to visualize the left hand pattern as it goes down. And then you don't need to worry so much about that. And you can just enjoy the melody. So. Now this is where it goes all funny, and it, so that, let's call that sort of section one, <laughs> uh, section one, and this little part we can call section two, which is quite a handful. So be prepared. It took me a little while to get one of the chords into my left hand because uh, I didn't like the distance between my ring finger and my index finger for this particular chord I'm going to show you in just a moment. So it, from when it goes down together. At the same time, with this C sharp in the in the left chord, with the G and the B, and the A sharp in the right hand. The reason I'm saying sharps is because we're in the key of G, and that has an F sharp, so I'm just using sharps to stick with that. Uh, so I'll play it, and then I'll show you what happens in section two. First part there, minor. And then you're going to go up to the G, and the left hand, this is where section two begins. You're going to play C sharp, E, and A sharp for two, and then just drop down to a C and an A. The E stays the same. Uh, and you're going to do that for uh, two also. Uh, and then I'm going to show you the next part of that. So uh, I'll try to go from where it goes to the E7. Now follow the melody. It's just simply going to go. And then I'll show you what the left hand does. But the melody is just going. And then I'll show you the next part after that. So it's it's based on that D sharp and the E with the C on top. So from this E seven shape, C sharp, and then 
drop down to C, E and A. One, two. And they're going to play that twice. And then we'll get to here, but I'll show you the, the left hand. Because you need to play uh, two chords, but they're a bit awkward to play. And you'll have to repeat it quite a lot to get it into your fingers. I had to do it a lot with my eyes closed, so I stopped concentrating. Now I can do it, but it, it took me uh, you know, sort of 20 minutes to keep going over it. What happens is, when you're playing this E here, the left hand is going to go down here and play two Bs. Two Bs or not two Bs. Bom bom. B, B, but together. One. That's B, one for the next part, because all the stuff that we just did before, if you, you, you'll see in a moment, adds up to be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and, oh, sorry, this is going to be um, beat one, and you're going to come up to a chord, which is A, C sharp, F sharp, A. Okay, but uh, I'm not using my middle finger, but for me, I didn't like that. My, my hands didn't like it. Uh, to play the C on the middle finger for me, and the index on the F sharp. You might play it differently. You may have a big enough hand to do something else, but you, you may not do it with the little finger. I can't possibly do that. It's ridiculous. So do whatever works, but that does work for me, and it will probably work for you. But it's a bit of a weird thing with the ring finger and the index. See what happens. Um, you have to play that three times with the melody, which I'm going to show you, and then uh, you're going to go to a second chord. I'll give you that second chord now. You're going to go from A, C, sharp, F, uh, sorry, no, A, C, F, sharp, and A, to being G, B, D, sharp, F, sharp. Nice sound. But uh, my fingers change here. The, the little finger stays the same, but my ring finger gives way to the middle finger on that particular chord. So I'm going from this shape, and then the top two fingers are the same. They take the uh, D sharp and F sharp, but and the left hand goes down, but my ring finger moves away, and the ring finger takes the B. So it's going to go, uh, and that's going one. So the, the B in the bass, the double B is beat one. One, two, three, four. And then you have to go to this chord that I've just explained, and you only play it once. So it's a big handful. One. And then you remove the F sharp and the thumb, and the D sharp goes to an E. Now that shape is exactly the same chord from the beginning of the song. See? So it's reappearing from having been part of this odd chord. And you're playing that three times because the first chord, the weird chord, uh, is beat one and then uh, with a G, two, three, four. And then I'll show you the next bit. So from going up, it goes uh, from, I'll go from the E7. Slowly. B in the bass. Weird chord number one. Two, three, four. One, two, and then the melody is going three, four, just a G to the B, which is technically a root to a third. One, two, three, and that's that's two, three, four, and then the melody, the left hand simply moves up only the bottom two notes to be A C. E stays the same. Now we simply have an A minor shape, very simple, easy shape. So you're going to go B, two Bs in the bass, A C F sharp A. Two, three, four. Weird chord number two. G B D sharp F sharp. One, and then just the same. Then the first chord G B E. Two, three, four, and then A C E uh, for two. Which are going to be beat one, beat two. Then for beat three and beat four, two separate things happen. On beat three, you just go down to an A octave. That's beat three. And then you come up to a chord which appeared in part one, E, F sharp, C. That's beat four, so you only play it once. So it's uh, A minor for two. One, two, A in the bass, three, four. Trust me, you'll appreciate these little bits. Uh, I'm reminded of my one of my favourite teachings. Uh, make... Uh, 
achieve the great things by achieving the small things. So we need to achieve these small things. Achieve great things by achieving small things. It's very simple uh, teaching. So from the, I'll go from the beginning and see if you can follow along or put it together in your mind. A very easy pattern here. F7 shape to the minor 7 for 2, minor 6. I'll slow down again. B in the bass. Weird chord number one. Weird chord number two. One, two, three, four, A minor. One, two in the A in the bass. Three, four. And then you're going to do the next section. So hopefully you'll understand that. So from the E. This is the second, well, what, what section is this? Let's say section four, perhaps. And it's going to go, I'll show you the left hand first, having just done beat three on the A octave, beat four on the E, F sharp, and C. All the next parts are going to build up in blocks of two or blocks of four. So you're going to play the next chords for two beats and four beats, a mixture of them, and you'll see. So the first one you're going to do is two beats on B, E, and B, having done this shape. Having done E, F sharp, and C, which is beat uh, four, three, four. You're going to go one, two, and then you're going to go C, E, and A. So the two outer notes just come in. E stays there. That's like an A minor first inversion, or a C6 shape without the fifth. So uh, uh, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then back again to the same shape, B and E and B, but for four this time. One, two, three, four. And then back to the original shape, C, E and A, for four again. One, two, three, four. And then again to B, E and B for four. One, two, three, four. So that's quite an easy thing to remember. B, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. again then you're going to go for two beats with a D sharp and then two beats with that shape but the B comes down to an A so that's the end of that section and then it just simply goes to a C and a G but we'll get there in a moment I'll show you what the left hand does you're basically focusing on the F sharp and the A and a little and a B you play once so uh, I'll go from the uh, E7 before the crazy chords. Now we do this. Four. Sorry if you can hear the siren. Down to the D sharp with the A on top. <laughs> uh, apologies. You're just simply going to go to the like this. Now you're just playing a C first and the fifth with the third. So the first and the fifth with the third up here, and you're going to play C and G for four beats like that. And then you're, uh, what I do is put my index finger on the, I don't know why it just works, on the B, on the A sharp, which kind of looks like a C7 shape. So, uh, uh, I like to put my uh, index finger there. Uh, you're playing that for two beats. So, one, two, three, four, one, two, and then this famous again, C, E, and A shape for, um, for two. So it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, which sounds good with the melody. And then, so just remember that little bit there. And then you're going back to the B, E, 
but this time an A on top, and you're just going to go one, this is very easy, the top comes down, A, G sharp, G, but the B and the E stay the same, so one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three, four, then you finish that part with B flat, C, uh, and or A sharp, C, and G, but the right hand's going to play an E. So let's get to that point there from the E7 before the, the weird chords. Oh, sorry, I'm using the wrong fingering. Oh! So, two. Oh, Jesus, I looked at the camera. Two. D sharp. Four. Two. And then C, E, and A. And then to uh, B, E, and A. A sharp C G hold it down now the ending chords you'll be happy to learn you simply play two B's in the left hand and the right hand is playing two E's which is the sus 4 sound one two three four that's giving you that kind of uh, raised third that kind of sound I call it an Elton John chord And that's how it's going to finish in E minor. So but it, it's, it, it is played in a very nice way. So two Bs in the bass, uh, E and E, but F sharp for the fifth of B and B for the root of B. F sharp is the fifth, and you just play that. That's all I'm playing. But as one. Then the second chord, the two middle notes remain and the E's become D sharps because that's the sus4 dropping back to a third so you go and then when you do play that you add the F sharp to the bass which just sounds nice and then you, pl you go all the way down to the bottom and play the E's with an E minor chord E G B E and that's where it ends so I'll go from the beginning of that part slowly I mean from the beginnings, you know, section two, part two. Well. Slowly. count there. One, two, three, four, one, two, one, two. on that A minor. Not bad for 20 minutes, hopefully you can put part 1, part 2 together and uh, maybe even post your result. Uh, in part 1 I put uh, two quotes that Liszt wrote about Chopin in, in the book that Liszt wrote himself 
and uh, I recommend that you read those or read them again if you haven't if you have read them already read them again to get a style a, a feeling of how Chopin used to play uh, it's very useful and will help you with your interpretation I would also like to add to this video that I recommend viewing the score that link is in part one uh, so I'm not going to put it in this video because I want you to go and look at part one I guess all I can say is like comment subscribe and uh, see you in another video welcome to my channel if, I, if you are new and have a look at my blog and my ebooks and uh, thanks so much for watching all the best and bye for now